right i'll try to answer a few questions uh, before we get started then we can uh, resume and then close by 12:30 then open for q and okay uh, life cycle explain raju hold on uh, hold on for a few um, today i'll not sure if you can able to talk about that uh, we will build an build a uh, lightning web component okay so that will have uh, that where we will use all the life cycle you know uh, hooks rather i call it that way yeah so the connected callback the disconnected callback which we uh, which we used when we built our first web component right yeah so these are called life cycle hooks we will be using this in lightning web component as well okay yeah so when we do that lightning web component your question will get answered how to send to get could you please elaborate wow okay um where is my code currently uh, is residing okay <clears throat> Okay, let's do this sonali towards the end of our training 1230 right uh, just remind me if i just forget uh, i'll push this code whatever uh, i have done right so i'll push this code to github okay i'll make it public so anybody can access this code so that way it's fairly simple okay even with this vs code with this vs code and the in the along with that git plug plugin right it's fairly simple all you need is a free github account that's all okay just remind me just in case i forget okay when an lwc is deployed how do we take care of security and access level for profiles and users very nice question okay so when you when you talk about security right i would rather look at two ways one is the data security let's say you are building a, a lightning web component to show a list of uh, to show list of uh, opportunities okay that are due for close you know this month this month okay when a sales guy logs in he needs to show only the opportunities for which you know he is currently working on okay that's a data level security which you know you can you will handle you know using your uh, your your pr owd settings sharing settings etc okay so lwc it's more like you know getting the data and then showing it on the screen and then um, when you build lwc component especially in this case right you wanted to bring a list of list of you know opportunities uh, uh, to show it on the screen okay yeah so uh, you will write apex code okay and when you write an apex code the typical way how we have sharing without sharing keywords right and use that okay uh, we will create a lightning web we will create an apex class that time you know i'll emphasize this point again so through which you know your lightning web command will receive only the data that is that is you know available for users to see okay so we will not bring in the profile we will not bring in that user level you know logic into it okay we can do that certainly but when it comes to pure data right okay you will build an apex class the apex class will take care of it uh, will will by default you know uses the data security policies applied in your org and then brings the data okay here yeah? so when you uh, the other cases right you want you have a lightning web component which you want to show it only to the uh, to a particular set of users like say you know users having this profile so that time again you don't have to do anything inside the lightning web component so what you can do is uh, you can uh, handle that when you add this when you add this you know component to the page using component visibility for example in this case the record page right we did add this one correct yeah let's say i don't want this particular component to be visible for uh, users having profile marketing okay i can just simply set the component visibility right here i can say that you know okay okay i want uh, <coughs> i want the user having this profile okay so so these things have got nothing to do with uh, lwc you can able to you know use existing uh, uh, balance first to handle that okay data security we will use apex for other types of you know show and hide what to show what not to show we can able to you know do this here as well okay yeah so i'll go back now could you please explain home page record page and app page while place the component we will add the sonali in the home page now okay so uh, this is the record page correct whatever i am currently seeing on the screen is a record page why do i say this is a record page because this 
specifically talks about one system, which is Bertha Boxer, correct? So if you go to an account, this is again a record page. This account is a record page, Gmail LLC, because this is talking about only one record. It shows all the information about one single record. So that's why it is called record page, correct? So when I go to home page, it's a common page, correct? Common home page where I can just drop some components, you know, have my own uh, reports shown, etc. Okay, this is the home page, right? So, <clears throat> and then application page, I can create an application. Uh, something like this, you know, something like this uh, sales content. I can create an application, create my, create a blank page, right, you know, uh, right from the scratch. I can do that. Okay, that is also, for example, you use this setup. You use App Builder to create your own application page. I can use uh, So I can use my app builder, lighting app builder. Okay, I can create a new application page. When you click on new, it creates a new application. For, uh, you can create the, a, a blank page for you. So in this case, if you go to any page, right, you see something on the page, correct? Buttons, you know, in this case, there is a, there is a grid. If you go to a record page, you see, you know, a top header, few a chevron on certain components, right? If we want to start from scratch, Okay, start from scratch with a plain screen. You can just create an application page. So I can just say this is my LWC, let's say playground. Next. Okay, you have different options. Uh, you can just, you know, split that page into different sections. Yeah. So let's say I have just one region or I can just have two regions. That's it. Okay, I'll go with these two regions save so now what happens is right this will give me a blank page i can decide okay let me activate for all users um let me put that into a sales app let's save and then <coughs> go out so now I created a blank application page. If I go to the sales application, too many tabs, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, what was the name that I had given? Why it is missing? LWC Playground, here it is. <clears throat> you can see this, right? A blank blank you know application page nothing in it so you can decide whatever component that is you want to show a report fine you want to show list of tasks fine you want to drop a lwc component fine that's an application page for you okay hope that helps uh sonali um all right so there's a question about uh docker i believe so so kamal are you are you saying are you uh talking about docker extension because in the context of Salesforce, I have not seen any extension. Uh, Sorry, Docker, Docker extension. Uh, Docker is totally, totally different, right? So you, uh, that comes into the play, you have your code developed and you want to, you know, uh, you wanted to build your code. Okay. It comes under this, uh, there is a concept called containerization. Okay. Yeah. So where you build a code, and then you wanted to, uh, you have a code, you want to build the code, compile, build, deploy, and then run it completely. Okay. So that time you will just, you know, use this Docker concepts. Okay. In LWC, that's not there. Uh, that's not there as in, you know, we don't in this, at least here, it is not needed because you develop uh, VS, you use VS code to develop your uh, component. You deploy that in Salesforce. And that's it. Isn't it? Yeah. So. So Docker won't be, you know, necessary right here. Yeah. Okay. And also that requires uh, 
a very you know different uh, discussion altogether come on yeah <coughs> um i will do that at raju for sure okay explain till variant okay ankil this is what i was just you know talking about uh, uh, earlier so when you add a component for example uh, because you know ankil's question is very valid because his question is right explain the terms title variant right so when you add a component salesforce's default web components okay that's the term i'm using because lightning component is something lightning button is not you and i created right salesforce did create kept it for us to use correct we added that in our own components so when you add salesforce's web components okay there are attributes variant title so this is where this is you know what i was just referring to so where did they get this code i went to this uh, gallery right i requested everyone to bookmark this gallery right so in gallery if you go to that specification okay it tells you exactly what each attribute will do so that variant attribute yeah the variant attribute helps you to change the appearance of the button i use destruction as the value destructive as the value correct that's why it is showing red in color if i use success as a value it will start showing white in color okay and what is the purpose of the title so you can find it right here find this let's try in the documentation <coughs> <coughs> the title helps you wondering why it is not added ideally speaking every attribute right you should be seeing that but you know title is very simple that's the text that we are showing on the on the button okay yeah so similarly if you want to add an icon right you can do that you can very simply add an icon uh, to this uh, you know to this to this button that is also possible okay you can find all that information right in the specification okay so when you use uh, 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 you know a salesforce web component uh, the standard web components right salesforce the standard web components go to the specification once you will get a fair idea okay yeah so label i think we did use label as well i believe so ah label success correct so class will come to that lds very shortly okay that's it uh, i'll take one more question okay, okay. uh should be fine. good okay let's get started then okay let's get going so what did we do so far uh, okay before we uh, uh break right before we uh yeah before the break uh, we found that the the change that we made right was not reflecting on the page okay this is a typical problem again as a developer that you will face only as a developer not as a end user okay so what we typically do is while we work in uh, lwc development right um, we turn on debug mode okay we go to setup do it only for developers okay don't do this for your end users your sales users marketing users don't do them do that okay only for you enable this so you go to debug mode users okay uh, in my case i am i have logged in as john doe for me the debug mode is not enabled i'm going to enable debug mode check this done so now debug mode is enabled okay <clears throat> why is it needed because lwc at the end of the day you know when you peel that onion you will just see html javascript and css correct all the three files well uh oh madan raj yeah that's what i just did madan madan raj yeah so uh so html css and javascript all the three files are getting cached in the browser by default okay performance reasons it's not like every time it's going to you know load that data so it gets cached so when you enable debug mode you can just you know burst the cache or the cache right uh, it will not hold your files in the cache so in that way in that way right your changes will get immediately reflected okay again if it doesn't reflect i have another work around which also you can try okay now let's try this i enable the debug mode i'll refresh it's a costly operation debug mode so that's why i said right uh, don't do this for your end users okay do it for yourselves as in you know 
uh, when you do the development yeah and don't do don't do it in production as well okay so <clears throat> now you can just see this it did start you know showing up the latest right and also there is a message yeah so still if you don't see the new changes right don't worry right click go to inspect mode okay while you are in inspect mode on the top you have this refresh button right right click right click refresh button you will just see normal reload hard reload and last one is empty cache so just say empty cache and hard reload so this will reload html css javascript in that way your new changes right will start appearing okay that's option number two okay so get your debug mode enabled as a developer okay so these are the two ways in which you can able to bring the uh, you can burst the cache and then bring it okay not only that not only that this debug mode it's going to help you okay to debug your code what do you what do i mean what do i what do you mean by debug the code rajesh right so <clears throat> what happens is right the javascript code that you write is entire javascript right right so it's not going to be downloaded as is when this page is rendered so when the page is you know displayed on the on the browser this component that we have built okay it's going to it's going to show up right so in order for it to show up this html code will run correct and this javascript code will also run correct so when the javascript code gets downloaded right uh, i can show you that as well it gets minimized or minified okay if i go to sources uh, or if i go to network um if i go to javascript <coughs> go to source i'll go to three dots open file it's hello world right you can just see the javascript file did we write all these things no isn't it yeah in fact we did not even start writing javascript correct it's plain it's it's a plain javascript code that we have but behind the scenes salesforce you know took our code and then you know it did add some additional stuff in the code correct and that's what you are seeing all these things right here okay and the good thing is you are able to read the code okay you can able to read and then make out of it right but typically when the debug mode is not enabled you will not see this code in a readable format you will just see a minim a minified version of the code that is a reason to it okay it's like you know if you are going to load the javascript right a very big javascript file it's going to you know take few seconds to download into your browser and that will affect the performance of your application so if you minimize the file automatically it is done by the by the salesforce don't worry about it if you have a minimized file okay then the speed in which you know the javascript to the browser is going to increase that will increase the performance of your application on a whole okay so at least for developers right uh, when we do the development we want to see the code that we have written so that's the reason enable the debug mode okay so all these are good benefits of enabling debug mode again i'll reiterate don't do this in production do this when you do the development in your sandbox or the lower environments okay yeah so don't ever do this in production yeah that will affect the performance of the user okay so we will put a breakpoint and then debug the code as we write some complex you know lws code we will do that okay so for now i'll close this so now we have understood the significance of debug mode correct we got our picture we got everything done correct so the next concept from here we're gonna talk about is data binding okay 